So, hello everybody. So I'm Katrin, and I will talk this evening about STEM education, but my focus of this evening will not be on the technical stuff, not about engineering, not about mathematics, but about the science, the S of STEM, which is, according to me, sometimes a little bit forgotten. So I am going to tell you today a story about interactions, and you must imagine yourself at the age of 16. So you are 16 years old, this means that you are young, you are full of life, you have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to think about, you interact with your friends, you have to go to school, but you also have your hobbies, and well, you have a very nice life, but as I mentioned, you have to go to school. And today we have a lesson, chemistry, and it is about intermolecular interactions. So the teacher, we have very good, science teachers here in Flanders. So she tells you what these intermolecular interactions are about. She tells you about forces between particles. And she also mentions all the different types of intermolecular interactions that are existing. So she also shows you some examples from real life. For instance, she talks about hydrogen sulfide, which is a molecule that everybody knows because it is the smell of rotten eggs, so everybody knows it. Hmm? And then finally, this lecture ends by telling about hydrogen bonds, which are intermolecular forces, which are quite strong. And you find them, for instance, in water, and it gives water its particular properties, so water has a very high boiling point, hmm? and you also find it in DNA which is in every cell of our body. So we are bringing the world into our lessons. So as a teacher, this lesson is done. So as a teacher, you think, okay, I did, a, I did a fine job. I told them what are these intermolecular interactions. I told them all the different types. I brought the world into my lesson. I showed them some examples that they know. So we were pleased and then Remember, you are 16 years old, huh? so yeah, you are interested in interaction, yes. But at the end of this lesson, you say, okay, yeah, so what? Huh? So you are 16, eh? So this is, this is your world, eh? Your world, that was, that's, that's your friends, that's your parents that you have discussions with, that's your sports that are all interactions, you are interested in interactions, but, but not interactions between molecules. These are particles, you cannot even see them. So, who cares? I will show you some facts. So here you see the number of children, of the pupils in secondary education who follow a STEM program. You see about 43% of them do follow STEM. When we look at the boys and the girls who are following STEM programs, we see that in some directions, general and artistic programs, then you have 50-50 boys and girls. When you look at the technical and the more vocational programs, then you see that almost no girls are present there. So you can wonder how, how is this possible? What is the reason? that this is happening. Then when you look at higher education, we also have some figures, and then we see that approximately 30% of the students, they start a real program in STEM. About 20% of them receive finally, after some years of studying, a diploma, um, well, a real STEM diploma. Of these 20%, only 26% of them are girls, which means that from all the diplomas that we are handing hmm, in higher education, well, and in high schools, hmm, that only 5% of them are for girls who have followed a STEM program. So there must be a reason for this. And there are some more facts. Hmm. Studies show that when you talk to young people, well, they are interested. They are interested in science, they are interested in technology. They, they think it's really relevant for society, and also for their lives, because otherwise 
They wouldn't have an iPhone. Uh, they wouldn't have a tablet, a computer. Mm. But when you talk up to them about science at school, they think it is boring. They think it is abstract. It is irrelevant. They don't see the connection between what they see at school and the world that they are living in. So STEM education really has a problem. And there are different people who, who make suggestions about what is, uh, what is the problem, what, what is happening here. And some suggestions say, well, some people say that maybe it is because in our education system, we are focusing far too much on education where the children absorb science. So you are the teacher and you are just feeding them the science and you don't expect from the pupils who are in your classroom that they are thinking by themselves. They are just sitting there and they are listening and everything, everything is coming over them. What's more, when we are teaching in the classroom, everybody gets the same meal. When you are in one class, you all get the same stuff. If you are a fast eater or you eat relatively slow, you get the same portion in the same number of time, in the same number of minutes. If you like your meal spicy, or if you are a vegetarian, everybody gets the same thing. Hmm? So I think that maybe one of the problems that girls are not enrolling into STEM programs is maybe because we are not feeding them the things they like. Maybe we should focus more and look more what are they interested in. Hmm? and adapt our teaching, our way of teaching, to what they like. So we think that maybe it's better than just giving lectures like where they have to absorb science, that we go to a system where the pupils are more experiencing science. Meaning that you show them a problem, and then by interacting, interacting with their fellow students and with the teacher, then maybe they start to think and they can see the relevance of what they are teaching. Maybe we can make some more interactions about what they teach in school and society. Maybe we can show the links between chemistry and biology, chemistry and physics, chemistry and history, chemistry and society. Hmm? And when they see all these interactions, then maybe they see the relevance of what we are teaching them at school. So maybe we think that a change of the didactics of science education can be one of the solutions. So how can you do that? Well, maybe we can bring science into the classroom. Very simple, by bringing some diapers. And then we are talking about interactions. You can take a bottle of water, so I have one here, and you can pour it into the diaper, I have to make sure that I don't make a mess here. Mm -hmm. So you just do this. Oh, I think this will do. Wait a little bit, and in the meantime, you take some oil, mm -hmm. you take another diaper, you pour it here. You just do it like this. So approximately the same amount. So, move it a little bit. Then you take the diaper with the water. You feel, well, it doesn't feel very wet. And then, you just do it like this. And then, you squeeze. And nobody will see that the water runs out. So, there must be interaction, there must be something in there that keeps the water in, the diaper. Hmm? And then you can say, oh, it's just a cotton wool and it absorbs all the water so nothing happens. But then, here you take the diaper, I hope this will work, because as a teacher you always hope that when you do an experiment, it works. And I think it will not work, I didn't put in enough, but you see, uh, the oil, it doesn't stay into the cotton wool. It doesn't stay into this diaper. Means that you have different interactions. Hmm? Different interactions between the oil and the stuff that is in here, and the water and the stuff 
that is in the diaper. And then you can start your talk about interactions and the different types and what can be the problem, what can be happening here. And now you have them interested. Now something is happening. And this way, I think that you can make science or a lecture about interactions more acceptable for them. What's more, then you can show them similar effects, like for instance, when you make a jelly pudding, it's also about interactions between the stuff and between water. Or you can, for instance, I have something else here in my little table. You can show them that there is something like hydrogen balls, meaning that these are balls of water. You don't see them. Why not? Because they are practically, these are balls which are practically almost existing out of water. They have the same optical properties as the water. That's why you don't see them when they are in here. And then again, you can start talking. You can discuss it with them. So what I mean, if you do this, then you can make the links to things that they know, things that are happening in their life. And then they know that, OK, there is really something like interactions between molecules. So my end, the end of my talk is just state education is a story about interactions. But as a teacher, you have to take care that you also involve interactions with stuff that you are teaching and the society around you. So thank you. <laughs>